they got at Martins and Livingston. We want to welcome in Mike Detillier, WWL Radio TV New Orleans. He joins us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line, and this is ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Uh, he won't be the only one, Mike D., but now that we know that the Saints will be making a move, what do you think the uh, the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions is one of the super hot names? Um, do you think it will be kind of the first one to get there? What do you think the sweepstakes will look like to get Ben Johnson from the Detroit Lions? It'll be a lengthy line. I mean, <laughs> he, is, you know, he just is that hot guy now. Uh, and so I think it'll be a long line to get Ben Johnson. Uh, and he'll have his choice of where he wants to go as a head coach. And he turned down a coaching job last year. He did. Yeah. So uh, he goes to show he ain't particular. Uh, and he's just not going to jump at any job. I think he's uh, definitely going to have options as a head coach. All right. So Ben Johnson will be on the – you know, Mickey Loomis, um, we're both confident in saying Mickey Loomis will make this hire, right? I, well, I would be shocked if he didn't. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, he's in a position where Mickey's going to make that call when he decides to walk away from the Saints. It won't be the Saints telling him. It'll be him deciding uh, to retire or not. And he's He's made that. He talked about it last year at the end of the season that um, one day he knows he's going to wake up and say, you know, it's time for me to walk away. But that isn't – he made the comment that it wasn't that day. So um, it, it'll be his call on when he wants to walk away. All right. So he's got uh, Miss Benson's ear. Um, he's in the family like you've told us. Um, he's a part of the will, all that. Um, uh, is there another guy or two, Mike D, that you think may not be as red hot as Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, but is there, and I don't know if you're, you're thinking Vrabel too. I think he's a hell of a coach, but is there another guy or two that you look around the league and say, Hey, these two are going to be highly coveted too, outside of Ben Johnson, Mike D. I think I think it'll be an offensive minded coach. That has been the trend. Uh I do think that Mike uh Rabel will get another shot at this uh as a head coach. Not exactly sure where. I think for a lot of people they're gonna be surprised the list for you know, the one name that gets brought up all the time, Bill Belichick will be short if not he's not on any. Mm. Now, I just think, you know, if he was going to get hard, Arthur Blank would have hired him in Atlanta. It, it was, it looked to be the spot. But the thing with Bill Belichick is, and the resume is impressive, but he also wants full control. He can say what he wants that, you know, I'll take a job and don't have control over personnel. Uh, and if you believe that, I've got, mountain front property to sell you right behind my home here on the bayou. It, come on. It, he has been so bad drafting players throughout the years since he really has taken control. Uh, he does not listen to his scouting department or coaches or anything else. It's his own sort of whim on who he wants to select. Don't be surprised that uh, he gets zero calls about uh, a head coaching job. I hope Jerry Jones doesn't call him, Mike D. Ugh. No, Jerry's – I mean, on. that wouldn't Jerry, work because Jerry wants yeah. to run it. Jerry's not giving up control to anyone. And so um, you can be friends with somebody. You can be drinking buddies with somebody. But it doesn't mean you want to work with them, okay? Uh, so – I've always felt that way, you know, when everybody was talking about Sean Payton maybe leaving to go to Dallas. I knew that wasn't going to happen. Jerry was never going to give Sean a tremendous amount of control because he wants it. Uh, so well, why would he give it to Belichick? He's not going to do that either. 
okay, everybody thinks Belichick's just going to walk in and all of a sudden he's going to put his hands on a team and they're going to get better. Well, if that was the case, how come he didn't do it in New England once Brady left? Right. He couldn't do it. it because he's not a really good talent evaluator for all – the pluses with him, and I think he's a tremendous defensive coach, maybe the greatest of our lifetime, he never really kind of caught up with the way offenses are in the NFL today. And he's not really good because I've had someone who coached with him tell me he's much better with veteran talent evaluation than with college talent. And I've heard stories that they've had second round pick grades on players that they have picked in the first round, but he liked him for whatever reason. And so that's where they went. So he, he, I don't think that's going to work. And I think Arthur Blank was told by Robert Kraft and people with who had been working with him, Hey, get ready. If you hire him, he's going to tell you everything you want to hear. And then once he gets there, he takes control. Mm. He's he's going to be the head coach, general manager, everything. And again, unbelievable resume. But, you know, he did that with a guy that um, maybe is the greatest player we've seen in our lifetime. That's true. That's true. And and then once Brady left, okay, he could not get that magic back at all, Uh, you know, and it it fell apart real quick. And you look at that team, you know, Gerard Mayo's just trying to, you know, uh, get his head above water, which shows you how bad the Jets are, that they could, you know, the Jets couldn't beat them. And for, you know, a lot of people, oh, fire the head coach, fire the head coach. The same stuff I heard in New York, okay, with Robert Sala. They fired him. They placated to Aaron Rodgers and got him Devontae Adams. They finally got the contract ready and they got Hassan Reddick. They got the same record the Saints have. They two and six. Exact same record. Coaching fires in the middle of the year rarely 